Hey guys, hope enough here. Gonna be doing a reaction to After the Fact Scare Master by Silvercoil. It's recommended by I think what her name was uh Psy. Yeah. And yeah, I'm finally back from the party. It's like a Hearts and Hooves Day. It's a pretty fun, a lot of food, different games. I tried karaoke for the first time. Then now I'm really good at keeping my tone. Like that. Uh Actually, really easy, just like with me and balancing. I used to play those games where you, it's a Wii or something, you just stand there and try to move around. Apparently, I always had the perfect balance. <laughs> but, yeah, funny thing is, the whole party, I only ate a couple things, and I just drank up apple sparkling cider and orange juice. The whole, the whole damn party. <laughs> eh, still, it was fun. Got to talk to Michelle Krepper's, uh, the one who plays Apple Bloom, and I think Sweetie Belle or something. But yeah, it was kind of cool. But yeah, I believe she's going to the Everfree Northwest. Uh, I really gotta get that image on here. And I'll, yeah, I'll look up the info about the Everfree Northwest. Also, I'll check the info about SakuraCon if you guys are into anime. I think it's cool, but, I mean, I you go there just to cosplay, I mean, I'm not huge into, I want to go to the very top floor to just buy crap. <laughs> so, anyway, let's just get to the video. Three, two, one, one. Maybe Tyrik? Uh, you silver. You don't have the arms for it. Pony of Shadows? That just She's be you with a dark predator. blanket over your head. <laughs> How about the flying spaghetti monster? The okay, what? stop. You seriously want to be coated in marinara sauce? <laughs> the thought is kind of eek. I don't think we need to be sticklers about nightmare night costumes. Well, if you take his I mean, feathers out, he'd be a good turkey. Like that. What the? <laughs> there is no correct end to that statement. Therefore, I choose to abort. <laughs> That's a good birdie. At least this I didn't time hear he didn't go with the cute remarks. <laughs> oh, wow. this one. Uh, before that last one I reacted to. You're looking very... <laughs> wunderbar tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she actually looks kind of good as AMY. That's me. Oh, you're freaking dying. Uh, but seriously, <laughs> you look ridiculous. Hey, yeah? <laughs> Damn it! Ah, oh, there's glass in my eye! Oh, son of a bitch! Ah! Hey, you think I chose to be in this costume? Silver made me wear it. Oh, the background. I've that? seen those type of rain he clouds. Said something about two collabs with one stone. In the desert. Can't I at least cameo in this? No. Aww. Ah. Happy Nightmare Night, guys! Awesome looking costumes. Oh, but you still in the show builder. here, Silver. Or er, not F P ah. something like that. Wait, so you're not dressed up as an existential mess of self delusion? Oh, yourself. <laughs> He's dressed up as a turkey. Hey. Just so you know, I'm gonna be coming for your ass. <laughs> gotcha. Must be the zombie guy. Before? I feel like we've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> Confound you, Horatio. Why do I even bother? <laughs> Welcome oh. uh, hi. to the last day of the rest of your lives. Oh my god, I killed Kenny! You bastard! Is he undead or is he just drawn out? Drawn bones on him. Now, Silver, you remember what happened in Aught 14. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't shake this nasty feeling. Please promise me you won't go anywhere near the spooky cemetery this nightmare night. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean it. Don't find yourself within ten hooves of the front entrance. You would be putting the lives of yourself and everyone at risk. He's so good. This is <laughs> absolute... Are you even listening? Nope. <laughs> I'd love a cup of wine and a golden chalice. Thank you for offering. 
Oy. I will sing at your funeral. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, Worth it? New year, a new oh, he's a ghost. Okay. It could list the bottom of the barrel, but that would be an insult to Sludge. Hey, you can't talk to Finn like that. Okay, eh? okay, dude, um, whoever you are... I am the shadow that stalks you after dusk. I am the clammy dread that follows a Shyamalan movie trailer. I am the soul-piercing squeal of the missed garbage truck on the morning after a bad bender. Okay. I am Baron Tall Tales! Good for you. And tonight... You are all mine with which to play. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> you all up for some agony. Well, you lock the gate. So... I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, my precious little pretties. My little marionettes. My little brawny pongolins. What the fuck are you talking about? This <laughs> evening's entertainment will see you all be competing for top marks. Is you the bag, guess who? Okay. Me? Made one hundred. The one with the highest score by the end of the game wins a fabulous prize. A fabulous prize? Ooh, is it a pile of treasure? Or death? Eh. Oh, that is so 2014. Now, this is something far more juicy. A chance to write your name upon the pages of history. Win, and I will use all of my dark power to make you absolutely famous. Okay. Hang on, why does it have to be dark power that makes us famous? Have you seen that Kardashian show? <laughs> Come on. Ah, touche. I've never and seen it. And if we lose? No, I don't know. You ought to get horse fame. Eh? <laughs> uh, so what kind of challenge are we talking about? Tonight, we'll all review an episode. A nightmarish episode. An episode about the mares. At night. Okay. The Scare Master. Done. Oh, no. Knock it off. On the <laughs> three rounds, you will each take turns reviewing the episode. I will not choose the order of play. First, the lawful good. Then, the drama dope. Next, uh. the short. Hey! Then, the tall of it. And last, but certainly least, dear darling Buckbeak. <laughs> so listen, every time the bell rings, the next idiot speaks. The more potent your critique, the more points you earn. Sure. Yeah. Four <laughs> silver. <laughs> be warned. This is my game. Break the rules, or annoy me, and the lackluster episode will be the least of your worries. Hey, Scaremaster's not lackluster. Save it for the review, which begins now. Take it away, Adventure Time. I'm <laughs> a terrifying guy. The episode starts off with Fluttershy in her cottage securing every nook and cranny to make sure no one walks That yes, episode was okay. And of course, her animal friends do what they can to help as well. <laughs> Dang, Fuzzy, that's quite the impressive web shot. Spider-Man will be proud. <laughs> the Fluttershy's creature crew has set up camp for her under the bed, which is probably the last place you'd want to hide from monsters, but whatever. And she's pretty much ready to enjoy the rest well, of the Well, that's where people usually go to hide from the criminals. We've known from the beginning that Flutters has always had a special connection with animals. Feeding them, bathing them, teaching them to sing. She treats them like a loving mother would. And moments like this where they're willing to give love to her in return are always so sweet to see. Oh. Take note, Snow White. Singing alone won't build your trust with animals. You gotta put in some freaking effort. <laughs> Not bad, but there's a wrinkle in her little plan, eh? Your turn, Blue Ball. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. That wrinkle in her plan being Angel Bunny. It's no secret that everyone's hopeful future Hassenpfeffer dish has not progressed well throughout the series. Yeah, he's kind he of a He started out as just a seemingly loyal pet with a bit of an attitude to a full-on stuck-up, snitchy, and abusive little brat. From yeah. putting your hoof down to just for sidekicks, and now here. If anything, he seems more like a pet that Diamond Tiara would own. <laughs> so anyway, Angel is demanding that Mommy Dearest gather more carrots, which means she'll have to go outside during her most dreaded time of the year. Now, as Cook much as rabbit. I hate this character, I suppose we should applaud the fact that he acts as Fluttershy's catalyst for her to face her limitations. From mm. giving her the push to try Iron Will's assertiveness methods, Ooh. to what he encourages her to try later on in this story. He may act like a spoiled child, 
but he does push Fluttershy in the right direction, somehow. Okay. <laughs> right, fuck you, buddy! But Fluttershy is <laughs> hide in one spot, more terrifying than any decoration. She's right next to an over-eager Granny Smith! Okay. Is that the mummified pony that just leaped out at you? Hey, wait a minute. Back up. Big Macintosh, where are your eyes, sir? <laughs> <sighs> Pretty perverse, dude. <laughs> Your head in the gutter or theirs? I love it. <laughs> so much that I'll ignore you stealing keyframes, turn. This time. <laughs> Lightning Bliss, you're up. Wait a minute there, tall, dark, and undead. How am I supposed to earn points if you skip me? That's not fair. You're all competing for fame. Whoever said you had to play nice, eh? <laughs> Short stuff, amuse me. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> Fluttershy goes to see Twilight in her castle, intimidating enough to say the least, but <laughs> I love the subtlety that Spike dishes out in the hopes that Fluttershy was actually volunteering to come out for Nightmare Nights. But even better, Spike quickly follows up with a point that since Fluttershy's already out, she may have the opportunity to have some fun with her friends. Again, that was a good idea. he's shown his best qualities as a supporting character. Being supportive! Good little dragon. <laughs> but it's just like when I was afraid to sing in front of any pony. If I hadn't given it a try, I never would have found out how much I enjoy it. Continuity! Oh, continuity is about the past. Oi! Nothing Episodes. like losing a meme, eh, feathers? <laughs> now let's all pause to take a look at the scores. Okay. At our first commercial break, keyframe is clear. Uh, what the hell is with Silvers? What? But let's see how she does in the second round. Go! Um, okay. So, Fluttershy goes to Canterlot Boutique to see about the costumes. She goes with a boring black dress, kind of a letdown. <laughs> looking forward to what she might try out. That pony? <laughs> and it's frightening. But besides the plain dress, the costumes and the episode are such a treat from a visual perspective. Just like the design I still find it funny Lazio that they know about space, five. You can see but the bump and it doesn't look like they have. Season two to season five. In the first Nightmare Nights episode, we were given a simple but decent palette of blues, dark magentas, and purples, mostly to complement Luna's color scheme. Hmm. Here, though, we get the full spectrum of Halloween colors. From the fun orangey sky in the beginning, to Fluttershy's muted, uncomfortable green tea party, <laughs> to the return of Luna Eclipse's color scheme at the end. Hmm. The designers and animators in this episode really stepped up their uses of color to heighten a certain emotion. But back to the costumes. I feel that I... I... Uh, huh? What? Do I have a tarantula on my face? Hey, come on! You forgot the recap! The what? Yeah, everyone does a recap! But why? Wouldn't it make more sense and take less time to make the review eh? if we just talked about our thoughts and opinions, giving examples from the episode those we two needed, going? rather than needlessly recap an episode most of the audience has already seen? Yeah, but you know what? In the vain hope that some normies are watching this thing, we're doing the recaps. <laughs> but... Don't like it? Take it up with the committee! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wait, wait, I, I'm not... <gasps> and why? You still want to be in this video, man? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> well, easy come, easy die. Silver Quill, snap to! Now, I love Fluttershy to pieces and get that most of the time, her cowering is done for comedy, but this is an unfunny extreme. Throughout the fitting, she's envisioning that someone will actually attack her. We're going to encounter this later on in the episode, but the idea behind any thrill activity is that it's not actually life-threatening. Roller coasters, haunted houses, horror movies, they're all designed to create the illusion of fear. Fluttershy's friends need to sit her down and get her to realize that the fear is in her mind. That's the whole point. I mentally so alive, deal with it myself. So you have <laughs> to lose. Speaking of losers, all of you! <laughs> Bonus round! Name your favorite costume this episode. Roller Disco Pinkie Pie. 
Seeing her roll around during the episode was just adorable. And honestly, it makes me curious if we're going to see Twilight's. a roller rink in Equestria. It's fun, it's fabulous, and it's fluffy. <laughs> I want to hug all those mean poofs. I want to hug them. <laughs> I personally what the f love Pinky's 80s roller girl costume as well. There has been such a good consistency with Pinky's costume theming. With her part in Friendship <laughs> Through the Ages and now. Now we just need to wait for the roller skating episode. It's a fucking zombie. Santa Pie! But, I'm zombin why now? An improvement if you ask me. <laughs> Rarity's mermaid costume enhanced the possibility of mermaid ponies and slapstick, literally. <laughs> hmm. I'm torn between my love of slapstick and my favorite character. What a cruel dichotomy. Uh, anyway, he likes Flutter Sun, I guess. Uh, Silver? None of the main six are dressed up as Sailor Moon. I know, but she is. I ah. her to the classics. <laughs> and while this episode might not have the same quantity of costumes as Luna Eclipse, it's going <laughs> to see how these town ponies dress up for the holiday, and how they adapt both pop culture and local creatures into costumes. I've yet to see a bad costume in the bunch. I'm Idaho! Ah, well, can't win them all. Vespio! I didn't hear an answer out of you, boy! I'm afraid, eh, doesn't cut it. Ugh. Fine. Applejack the Lion. A. Because cute. And B. <laughs> It actually builds off of the Scarecrow outfit from Luna Eclipse. Maybe <laughs> next time there could be a Tin Mare? I mean, at least it'd be better continuity than frickin' Flutterbat. <laughs> oh, what's your beef with Flutterbat? Mummy? No. Headless Pony? No. Vampire Fruit Bat? Ugh, definitely no. The entire fandom would choose the Vampony costume. I mean, it's only one of the biggest dark pony memes in existence. And, as we all know, by internet law, anything in a show that even slightly resembles a meme is immediately loved and praised. <laughs> no, my ghost Okay, maybe not all of them. Ugh. Be still my beating childhood. But, in all seriousness, besides the obvious continuity nod... <laughs> not now! Practically everyone was wanting to see the return of Flutterbat ever since that little cliffhanger at the end of Bats back in season four, <laughs> myself included. And honestly, could you really blame us? I mean, her design was very well done, and her animalistic behavior was something no one would expect from the element of kindness. She's close enough to animals as it is, so what better way to get closer to them than by becoming an animal herself? Hmm. Even though she technically was never not an animal. Animals, animals, <laughs> and wow, does my brain hurt. And well, we humans are animals, since that so. moment, It opened up the gates for a ton of creepy artwork, theories, and story ideas in the fandom. The biggest being, could Fluttershy still willingly turn herself back into a bat pony? That'd be cool. We got a small dose of it and do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep, but that took place in a dream setting, so it wouldn't really count. Hmm. However, during my first viewing of this episode, when Thestral Shy appeared on screen again, I was on the edge of my seat, Fester, especially uh, with the addition of that haunting evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I was beyond excited to claim that theory to be 100% true, which meant we could be treated to an expansion of this little hidden mystery that plagues our dear animal caretaker. But, alas, it was just a costume. Yeah. 50 points off! Wait, oh, bull what? Crap. Oh, don't get me wrong, you hit the nail on the head! But you just spoiled the end of the episode! <laughs> what are the others supposed to talk about? <laughs> well, I guess he does have a point there. <laughs> yeah, way to hog the episode out of yourself, Thespy. <laughs> I'd like to share my thoughts. Mind if I chew your ear? So yeah, you see, you lose 100 points. Run. <laughs> Wait, I thought you said it was 50. But don't worry, you can win your 500 points back by making this more fun! You're a dick. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> First, let's add a little fact to your fantasy, eh? Eh? Ah! Uh, this part, okay. Oh no. You've gotta be kidding me! Manatee, for little louse tunes. Oh, Finn! Eh? Yes, sir? Your turn! Keep the review going just a little longer, and I might make it worth your while. <laughs> okay. So yeah, after proving this, you yeah. can never go wrong with the little black dress, Fluttershy and the others head over to Sugar Cube Corner for the Nightmare Night Party of a Lifetime. 
Or at least it would be if Fluttershy didn't have panophobia for the whole evening. The panelist. She said if I'm blindfolded and some point he would have leap out in front of me, I'd never have the chance to defend myself. Yeah, uh, she's kind of like me. I'm that nitpicky. If monster appears, how would I even hear to know I was under attack? What if when I'm eating one of these chewy taffies, my mouth becomes glued shut and I can't scream for help? Okay, you know what? Shut up! Alright, just shut the fuck up! You know, we can just leave you here! You see what I'm getting at here? I can understand Fluttershy being on edge, considering this is both a new experience for her and the scariest night of the year, but I think this is pushing it a little too far. Mm -hmm. At this point, Fluttershy's managed to assert herself and face her fears multiple times over. Sure, she's relapsed every now and again, but at her core, she has had some of the most substantial character growth I've seen in this show so far. Hmm. But this just feels like season one scared of her own shadow Fluttershy all over again. I guess hey, I got fear of the sky, the that'll past, always save forever. <laughs> this way in the show just feels completely out of place. Even if she at least tried some of the activities, I'd give her some credit, but she just comes up with excuses regardless of how simple the activity may seem. Hmm. You stood up to a towering dragon, but you won't eat a piece of taffy? <laughs> That seems like a bit of a stretch, am I right? Huh? I don't get it. Ugh, I thought my death was painful. But if there's anyone who deserves some merit in this scene, it's the Remain Five. Remain? Wait, what? Huh? Remain? Main? Dude, is that a text joke? <laughs> main? As in Main Six? Remain? <laughs> Is that a textual gag I'm trying to install in our brains by speaking it out loud? You f 50 points from Gryffindor! So <laughs> what? Oh. Well, I'm really sorry. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Good. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> I know you didn't. It won't happen again, I promise. <laughs> yeah, well, let's continue. Well, aside from Rainbow, who acts like she just came from the planet Jerkface, <laughs> none of Fluttershy's friends do anything to mock her or push her or make yeah, her feel bad. Like true friends. Those are some true, true friends, <laughs> if you ask me. So after Fluttershy apologizes for being a party pooper, Twilight comes up with a master plan. The thing you hate is being scared. But if you're the one doing the scaring, then... Ooh, ooh. Pretty please, can I tackle this Silver. one? Silver. Ooh, special request! Does that mean you're willing to pay a price? Um... <laughs> yes! Speak! This is one of the best moments of the episode. Up until this point, Fluttershy has been trying to make herself comply with a group. That's respectable, but also self-defeating. Twilight shows tremendous wisdom by recognizing that this is undermining Fluttershy, and turns the tables to give her friend a degree of control. That's a tactic many people miss in real life. Moments like this both make Twilight a great character and show that the Princess of Friendship title isn't just for toy sales. <laughs> okay. Uh, so with the other main five meeting up an hour later at Fluttershy's cottage well, where she tries to- that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna finish it tomorrow. Or the other part tomorrow. But yeah, hope you guys like the reaction and have a nice day.